Yeah, sure. Thanks for having me on. Hey, no so I thought about calling the episode biological control, which uh, historically means pest control, <laughs> but more and more there uh, in science circles and academia, it a you know, that term applies to bioengineering, geoengineering, as well as social engineering for humans. And um, it kind of fits with the 21st century uh, themes we're seeing, you know, emerging more and more each year. Right. So um, <clears throat> most people associate, you know, bioweapons with the Hollywood uh, image of it, like that movie Contagion or, or 12 Monkeys, that kind of sure. stuff, minus the time travel. But um, really, there's kind of like a Cold War going on that has been going on a lot since World War II regarding bioweapons. And there's a, there's a private sector side to it. There's a nonprofit side to it, like the Gates Foundation. And then there's a nation state side to it, which includes the whole bioterrorism side. And, um, <clears throat> you know, there's uh, the advantages are obviously for profit, but it's really about economic warfare. It's about um, costing the enemy as much money as possible, making them less uh, possible to go to war or uh, whatnot. Well, you say so it's like, sorry, go ahead, Johnny. Yeah, well, from, from a, a financial point of view, so biological weapons can be used to, you know, not just kill people, but to kill crops and stuff and therefore, you know, starve people out uh, and prevent so it, them from going to war, right? It would, it would be like a biological war of attrition without ever going to war <laughs> yeah and you can you can you can actually subvert an entire country you can bring an entire country down for pretty cheap too right these things are not all that expensive yeah it's definitely asymmetric warfare some people consider it uh more inhumane than nuclear weapons and uh you mentioned agriculture crops and livestock yeah that's actually more considered fair game because they're not humans that kind of stuff goes on now and in past decades look at china swine flu bird flu those things aren't always naturally occurring right and heck biological warfare has been a thing for a long time oh, yeah. as well we've seen yeah. it we've seen it throughout history i mean good god as far as if you believe in you know the medieval period just saying um not trying to meme but uh, as far as we know, you know, there are some theories about the Black Plague in Europe, you know, in the mm -hmm. 1300s that started from uh, the Mongols at the port city of Kaffa. I think it was on the Black Sea, uh, catapulting dead bodies that carried the Black Plague uh, into the city. And that's how they made them, you know, from a crossroads city from Eastern uh, Asia into Western Central Europe. I always had a question about um, that. And... So you're, you're, you're catapulting bodies that, you know, contain the Black Plague. Who's handling them? Well, all it was was, oh, wow, people died, and this was around those people that died. At most, it was a quasi-scientific religious belief. It was always some kind of spiritual, maybe religious thing. Maybe not that God did it. What, smallpox? That it was that something was a sickness and infectious in disease. Kind of, oh, yeah, yeah. Infectious then, disease right, right, okay. was not like, Oh God did it. You know, especially in the Christian foundation, it was not necessarily, mm -hmm. but it was something that this was infected with maybe an evil spirit, a demon, um, you know, in certain polytheistic societies. Yeah. It could have been cursed by a God, you know, sure. by Apollo, sure. uh, who is the God of sickness as well as medicine, um, things like that. There Which, was also course, the miasma theory, the idea that like bad air was uh, uh, what yes. caused disease. Oh right. Oh uh, yes. Right. And let's let's not forget too that it was um, in medieval and Renaissance Europe. You could not get a degree in medicine without a degree in theology. Those two went hand in hand, actually. Um, so this is this is something that was not just a scientific theory for a long time. It mm -hmm. was intertwined with spirituality and theology. It's only in the last 150, 200 years, really, um, that things have been really nailed down. And I think we're going back into that theology realm with uh, the idea of a one world religion or just atheism and science, you know, yes. being the replacement for religion. Man, I think you're hitting the nail on the head with that. Yep. Please keep going. <laughs> Well, you could call it biological singularity, I guess, or, um, I mean, just in academia, there used to be a lot of professors that were Christians. It wasn't a physics department, biologists, mm -hmm. doctors. It was very common that they had some kind of faith. And with each, with each, which, which, with each decade, that's going away. It's uh, like Even Haram. Even Christian universities. 
Yeah, it's basically blasphemy in the university now. Right. Yes, even Christian universities like Notre Dame and whatnot, they're very secularized. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, the biggest, all the biggest, the biggest scientists now are people like, you know, well, not, well, it's more like astrophysicists, but like Carl Sagan and those guys and, you know, and Neil deGrasse well, Tyson, they're the, all atheists. Who's, who's the Asian guy? Who's the Asian guy that actually admitted that the universe had to creep, had to be created by some kind of higher power? Oh, like the uh, really popular Asian guy. Not familiar with that. Uh, oh man, you gotta look that up now. But in know. academia, actually, they um, as a biologist, as a microbiologist, it's ridiculous to assume or suggest that these lipid bubbles and DNA kind of self-assembled in these sulfur vents at the bottom of the ocean. That's a fringe theory. That's actually far-fetched. What they believe is the, I think it's panspermia theory, uh -huh. the idea that life was seeded on Earth from somewhere else, whether that's Mars or outside of our solar system. But there, that could be considered intelligent design, correct? I guess so, yeah. But, to a point because it was created somewhere. <laughs> right. It just it was created. the can down the road, you know? It's not really it, showing where exactly life started, it just that it was seeded here. Um, I think a lot of themes of theology are going back into science with this kind of atheism or alien script, and um, even metaphysics will eventually work its way back into science. I believe. I think you're right, and it's it's very strange, isn't it, well, that we're that we're gonna, seeing this transition, you know, yeah, well, from opening ahead, your, Johnny. I was gonna say opening your third eye. You know, it's gonna they're gonna be doing you know DMT experiments, and then so you know it's aliens. Well, look, man, you gotta you gotta stop brushing your teeth with fluoride. But what I'm, no, what I'm saying is, it is science. Science is the one is is the one world religion. The more you look at it, that's exactly science it without is. theology. Yes, science without theology is the one. Yes, science plus atheism is the is the religion because atheism exactly. is a religion. Because I don't give a fuck who you are, you fedora wearing the, weirdos. It, atheism is a religion, okay? And your <laughs> priests wear white coats, and you know, and and they give uh you know TED talks and that kind of shit. But yeah, you know, one of the one of the most interesting things, and I'll shut up after this please but, uh, but the one of the greatest things i ever heard was actually from a film it was a freaking anthony hopkins movie called the right and i'm not a catholic any of that but i have ex i have experience with the demonic but it was a film called the right and it's a it actually is a very good film but um Anthony Hopkins is this old exorcist and, uh, and he's talking to kind of agnostic priest because, you know, what else can Hollywood show? Right. Um, but he says, you know, the greatest trick the devil has shown or the, the greatest he could play is to convince you he's not there. You know, the, um, you know, a bandit, a, a, a mm -hmm. burglar in your house. He doesn't want you to believe that he's there. He doesn't, he doesn't flip the light on and tell you he's there. I've heard that in a few movies, actually. It's a recurring theme in Hollywood. Um, and it could be. And it, it's actually one of the very decent ones. And I'm like, oh, my God, why are you putting this out? Why? Well, well, because it's true. But it's true. It's the enemy, whoever that may be to you. Uh, and, you know, it, to me, it's Satan. It's the enemy. It's Lucifer. They're not going to flip the light on and say, hey, it's me. Our, well, and there okay. was... And there was real quick. The there was a video game came out a few years ago, and the sequel just came out. The Division, uh, Division One, Division Two. Mm -hmm. It's a Tom Clancy uh, video game adaptation, and it's based on a bioweapon that was actually attached to dollar bills in New York City that were handed out mm. and distributed on Black Friday and by like New Year's Eve, um, like half of America was decimated. And then yeah, it that, just continued to spread across the earth. That concept brings up a good point. The longer the incubation time, like smallpox, the right. more it will spread. Right. That's why like things like Ebola aren't exactly a technically a global threat because the incubation time isn't long enough. Right. Absolutely. They, right. It burns out really quickly. Right. Well, wasn't it in uh, was it Madagascar where they were digging the bodies up and then dancing with them? Yes. Yep. Yeah, and, these and then Madagascar for, also, they had a vampire craze, and they were also just digging bodies up and stabbing them in the heart. Haiti's got that. Haiti's got that flower that does the uh, the, the zombification flower. Yeah, yes. that's, that's related to scopolamine. It's yeah. an anticholinergic. Scopolamine, so that's the one. Yeah, it's the, yeah. Is that what it is? Yes, it, it, you can create scopolamine from this flower. 
Wow, yeah, I actually didn't know that. Or something, I think. They use it in Colombia, too, to yeah. rob people. Colombia and South America. It's funny, the only place you can find it in the United States is in places like Berkeley, California, and like Hollywood, California. Oh, good. Weird, huh? In Hollywood, really? Yeah. We used to find it, like, when I lived in Berkeley, uh, there are these little flower. They're not little. They're big, and they hang from the tree limbs. They hang upside down, right? They, you know, most flowers point towards the sun. These ones hang upside down. And uh, my, we, I used to joke around with my kid that they were dangerous. Be careful. The upside downs will get you. You know, as a joke. And then yeah. like, researching them for the voodoo show. Holy shit! These things are actually dangerous. Don't touch the plant. <laughs> now he won't even walk on the grass barefoot. You were just talking about the biological singularity. Um, you want to go into that a little more? Or? Yeah, that's kind of for the last section, like looking forward, brain okay, computer okay, interface, okay, okay. DNA printing, nanotech, you know, that right, kind right. of future tech stuff. Yeah, we can talk about I wanted to CRISPR talk first about like the difference between what nation states do and what NGOs and corporations do. Okay. Um, you know, nation state campaigns, you associate it with movies like The Rock or right. um, Contagion was a supposedly very accurate one. But these are these are like massive uh, things that would pandemics that would cause the whole economy to grind a halt, the whole world to grind a halt. That's likely not going to happen. Um, what's more likely is what's been going on, which is kind of a cold war type thing, uh, just like espionage. It, it happens, you know, while the world turns. Right. And um, that includes things that we don't really consider like cancers, autoimmune diseases, metabolic diseases, which you guys did a great episode on, by the way. Thank you. And there are a lot of, um, behavioral, I would say, you know, these health compromises are downstream of behavior. So bad behavior enables poor health, whether that's like sex, drugs, rock and roll, or fat, salt, sugar, or, you know, we could get into topics like toxoplasma and, and candida. Oh, toxoplasma. And, um, cat lady disease? That's, that's one of my favorites. Cat lady disease and, and candida is basically butt fungus. So it, it's uh, it's not really an accepted theory whatsoever. You won't hear this anywhere. But um, candida people with candida do crave sugar. Like in the alternative health world, if you go keto, you have that keto flu. Mm -hmm. Some of that, maybe all of that, is the candida die off because there's all this um, fungus, and it's supposed to be microscopic. But as you eat a lot of sugar, or if you have a compromised immune system, it grows so much it actually grows into the intestine, like uh, roots into the ground, like between the cells. It's a very, very terrible thing. And so, all of those, all that tissue dying off from the fungus, there's a lot of tox mycotoxins in there. And it takes, it puts stress on the liver and gives flu-like symptoms. So whenever you um, quit sugar or quit gluten, go paleo, that kind of thing, keto, mm -hmm. um, it's pretty hard. You get cravings. It actually influences your behavior, possibly the candida. And then toxoplasma is very well established to influence behavior. Absolutely, <laughs> yes. You get the, the cat lady disease. Comes from the uh, having, you know. Wow. Yeah, it's what did what does it do? It's um, it makes it makes women. Well, it makes what did you say? It makes women to be more friendly. Yeah. So for rodents, for mice, it causes them to run towards cat urine. So, ba so you can think that it causes people to go towards danger. In huh. case of men, um, they drive faster, they're more reckless, more aggressive. In case of women, they're more friendly. And that's in humans. Interesting. And I'm not sure about mice. If it, the gender thing is is clear in mice. But it's a little bit similar to the mouse utopia experiment, too, actually. No, the whole should... transgenderism thing could be somewhat tied to candida and toxoplasma. Really? That's a very, oh, yeah. very interesting situation. I mean, wow. Thinking that it's, it's a, 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 a lack of certain nutrients and not good, good ones, uh, toxins, I guess. Um, sure. I've tried to stay away from using using toxins as an excuse for everything, but that, wow. Yeah, toxoplasma is technically not a bacteria. It's like an amoeba. Um, is it? Kind of related to algae. It's cut, so it's like a larger single-celled organism. It leaves cysts in the brain and muscle tissue, even in people who are not infected. Or rather, everyone can be exposed to it in their lifetime. Very few will become very ill. Mm. But most people will develop antibodies and there's these microscopic cysts that may or may not cause inflammation or behavioral changes, depending on how robust the host's immune system is. So now is, is oh, it, go ahead, Johnny. I say, is this, is, is this a PSA to uh, don't own cats? 
you know, if you take care of them okay, it's actually not much of a risk. If they're indoor cats, they won't have it. It's um, okay. It's an outdoor. Actually, cat. eating pork, pepperoni, cured pork, cured beef that can carry it. Huh? Can carry yep. it? Really? Damn it! Oh yeah! Damn it! Damn it. Oh. oh. So so like like slim jims and salami and stuff, man. Anything that isn't oh cooked properly. Yeah. All the good like- keto food. So uh, one one question that I have just personally, so if your family has a risk of like autoimmune uh, disorder, um, let's say like ulcerative colitis, things like that, um, can candida actually um, trigger that or no? Yeah, viruses, bacteria, and fungus can uh, trigger any kind of autoimmune disease, but specifically in the intestines. Yeah, that's actually proven. Okay, Um all right. Not Interesting. I've, I, okay. So I have family members that have ulcerative colitis, I, like two or three. Um, oh, that's that aren't, um, it's, yeah, interesting. I've so far escaped it. Um, hmm. So just hoping, hoping I keep going on that. But yeah, it, it does suck to see that in them. And one of them did try keto um, and it kind of it made it worse for them. So that's, that's an interesting anecdote. I'll have to, I'll have to talk with them. Uh, maybe we can talk more later about it. Yeah, those autoimmune diseases, um, sometimes they have an infectious cause that just hasn't been discovered yet. Um, Even in different people in the same family? And there's, Yeah, and then there's also what's called an umbrella diagnosis. Like, um, you know, colitis could have multiple causes. It does actually have multiple causes. And even ulcerative okay. colitis could have, like, viral huh. causes like Epstein-Barr, fungal triggers. Um, there's the genetic component. Stress and diet do definitely play a role. Okay, um, but yeah. Anyway, how did we end up on autoimmunity? Sorry, I, I don't know. Yeah, talk a lot of money. I mean, in the U.S., twenty percent of our GDP, our economy, is healthcare. It's way more than energy. Right. I think more than the military and all the contractors combined. Twenty percent. Twenty percent. You know, in than, Western Europe, the military. Uh, Western Europe, um, <clears throat> they you know they get pretty good care and they pay about half per capita or something like that. Uh, and I think percent of GDP is even less than half of 20%. So, you know, the U.S. has a big problem. In fact, I've told people before, um, boomers are not boomers, but yeah, boomers, aging, demographics, things like Social Security, but more, more of all Medicare and just healthcare in general is a national security crisis. It's going to take a couple decades to manifest, but I said this a decade ago and, you know, we're well into it. Yeah. So, yeah, let's, let's do that. Yeah, so I mean, I don't know exactly what's going to happen, but you know, if you look at um, pharmaceutical prices, mm-hmm. um, the inflation rate there is anywhere from ten percent year over year average. To by the way, Shrekel, Martin Shrekelli or whatever, that guy did nothing wrong. His concept of jacking up prices like ten thousand percent was to fund research because that medication was old, off patent, off label. It was from the nineteen fifties or something. It was actually a medication for toxoplasma. Because people with HIV or full blown AIDS, they die from that stuff. In fact, it's like kills fifty percent of them or something. Yeah, so, didn't didn't his appeal just get uh, denied yeah. today? As that well. guy's been railroaded so hard. I mean, he's he, so, he, he, he it's was ridiculous. Stupid. He's he was stupid to tweet about Hillary. That was dumb. However, he's actually seems to be a good person. Yeah, he, no, he he seems to be a fun guy to hang out with. He seems pretty funny, kind of shitlordy. Um, he 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 fucked up in uh, that he was probably not working with them, you know? Yeah. His concept was a huge threat to the pharmaceutical industry, yeah. well, but you got to think these, these medications cost like 40,000, hundred thousand a year where the toxoplasma one was something like five cents or $5, let's say, you know? So his idea was, you know, why not charge, you know, five grand and then that profit or whatever can go into researching something new because resistance is real antibiotic resistance anti-malarial resistance it does instead happen. of something like 60 grand right yeah, but otherwise totally. yeah. i've got i've got liberal friends in in you know uh, nursing programs in my state and in other states that are you know very very good nursing programs that are going off on this guy and they don't even understand this situation they don't even understand uh, what he's doing, what he actually did. Right. They just know. Um, and I think that uh, it, uh, the libertarian to me is like, it's a free market. And uh, if I want to charge, you know, $900 a pill or whatever the hell it was, I'm going to charge $900 a pill. Um, I know. <laughs> <laughs> as far as population control, um, bioweapons can be very effective. 
Yeah, one could cause sterility, right? Right. Oh, yeah. Maybe well, no. it's happened. As a, matter of fact, as a matter of fact, if you wanted to ethnically cleanse a country, um, you could do, you know, some sort of, well, we can get into that later, but... um. Uh, that's 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 the wrong that's the wrong note. I also, wrong all note. Oh, I was talking about Israel. What's like that? you know, there's like 200 or more known uh, xenoestrogens <laughs> in consumer products. Yes, like a lot of cleaning products, fragrances, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Plastics, right? Phyto, phytoestrogens. They're putting freaking chemicals in the water, turn the freaking frogs gay. You know, I mean, all that shit. It's true. It's the um the how much I forgot what study it was and what body of water but the amount of estrogen found in it is ridiculous and it's like how many how many grams of estrogen do you think women take in their lives by taking uh, birth control pills it's not that much the problem is that wastewater treatment leaves all the pharmaceuticals in and then dumps it back in the water right that's what I'm saying but if you combine every woman that's taking this stuff and they're pissing out all this estrogen and it, 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 like you said, compare, you can't filter that shit out. And, compare that to the amount of men drinking IPAs. Well, I'm, I wasn't, I wasn't done. I wasn't <laughs> I'm, done. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. No, but that's, that's a big thing. That's where a lot of this estrogen gets into the water supply and is from uh, women's birth control. And of course, yes, yep. with the men, with the IPAs now, there's so many phytoestrogens in these hops uh, we've got these soy yeah. boys and their and their super hoppy IPAs and their their comic book T-shirts and whatever uh, and other drinks and other foods. Uh huh. It's it's incredible. Yeah, it's, in, it's incredible and horrifying. They had to, to they had to like they had to change so much stuff, but but they just hid the phytoestrogens elsewhere. They took them out of they took the BPAs out of the plastic and they put it everywhere else. No, it's still in stuff like receipts at the store. That, That's uh, right. I never touch a receipt. People, thermal paper. Yeah. Checkers, check out people. Look at me all weird. I'm like in the bag. Put it in the bag. Just put it in the bag. I wear a glove now. <laughs> I have work. actually probably been ripped off every now and then. I don't I, like Walmart receipt checkers are probably all going to die of some sort of something from touching those receipts every day. You know what? I mean, sucks they're also in wheelchairs anyway, but well, t- yeah. testosterone doesn't work the same way as estrogen. So you can poison a bunch right. of people with estrogen through the water, through the skin, whatever. Testosterone, I don't think it gets absorbed through the skin, and it won't work in water it or can. food. No, it's it can. an injection. You get the, no, no, you, the transdermal patch. Yeah, but that yeah. might have DMSO or something in it. Ah, as a that's carrier. true. That's true. Yeah, but yeah, no, but no, but but yes, you're right. Normally, you can't transmit uh, testosterone through the skin and. Estrogen it breaks down in the stomach too. Yes, yeah, it's easily transmitted in the skin through the skin. Estrogen is very toxic. It'll ruin someone's heart. It'll increase their body fat percentage. Are you um, saying that sounds like being a woman? Yeah. Are you saying yeah, <laughs> being a woman is just bad? I mean, like <laughs> I mean, <laughs> increases body fat percentage, <laughs> like, breaks your heart. <laughs> yeah, the whole heartbreaking thing. I mean, that's yeah, just being around women, right? Well, there's a real thing. When women go through menopause, there's a higher risk of heart attack. There's yep. the whole broken heart syndrome thing, yep. which is kind of its own thing. But yeah, women generally uh, are more likely to... And also um, skeletal uh, bone mass, mm-hmm. bone density, mm-hmm. is wrecked by estrogen and progesterone, where testosterone actually strengthens your bones. Um, so testosterone could we be seeing a rise in, So could we be seeing a rise in like osteoporosis and these kinds of... Um, uh, disorders because of an influx of uh, estrogen in male male and females um absolutely that shouldn't yeah. be there yeah not so much in females but in men yeah a loss of muscle mass and uh, depression all that kind of stuff so depression has a part to play in it as well is that yeah, correct whether you're male or female if your hormones are off it's going to mess you up um, I would say that hormone imbalances, xenoestrogens, absolutely cause depression. Yeah. And also it changes your brain. Uh, it irreversibly changes your uh, brain anatomy, like visible right. brain, fMRI and whatnot. Right. And that's that's something that still a lot of people don't catch. Um, a lot of people don't realize how much testosterone is a performance enhancer. I mean, there's a reason it's scheduled. I think it's schedule three. And um, it, mm-hmm. it, it increases – you know, not just muscle mass and bone density and your red blood cell count, but it also increases, changes your brain, maybe makes you better at math. I don't know. But um, yeah. God, I, be, need, I need that then. <laughs> and they keep lowering. Hold on, what is the, this stuff uh, that makes you better? What is this stuff that makes you better at math? Probably testosterone. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> oh maybe zinc. Case. Zinc? 
testosterone. So all the things that all right. So all the things that those of us that are even lifting are taking, anyways. If you're not boosting your testosterone by like you know, dude, you can actually fix that with like no fat. But all right, I digress. So basically, if you're lifting, you're increasing your your testosterone, Absolutely. your math ability, cardio actually, too. Because if, if you're doing cardio, if you lift. Good. Brain will get starved. Well, basically. yeah, you, yeah, cardio. You no, know, you don't necessarily need cardio, but if you're going to lift and you want to produce testosterone, you got to squat. So, just a little. God, I'm talking squatting. about extreme cases. I'm not saying you need to do cardio. Just that if you're really out of shape, it will eventually affect your cognition. Oh, absolutely, it will. Have you ever you ever seen? It will really, definitely. Really, you ever seen a really really smart fat person, like a really fat person? Like I've seen some heavy set, you know, some chubbier guys that are that are pretty smart. You know, we know we know we probably know quite a few uh, that are, you know, guys could probably hit the gym a little bit, but you never see an obese genius, really. You know what I mean? No, like, you're right. Like, and like, like, a fucking God, lark, when, I, a lark when I riding around the mall and a lark just like drooling on them with a giant big gulp. No, it doesn't work like that. Jesus, I'll tell you what. When I hit my fattest, dude, when I hit my highest weight uh, back in December of last year, I was not feeling intellectual stuff at all. No, okay. So back to back to back to this. So the drops in the fertility rates definitely means of population control. Um, what is this about the connection between mental illness and uh, inflammation? Well, um, autism is uh, likely caused by some kind of brain inflammation. They don't know exactly what it is. Vaccines definitely could play a role. I would say it's a partial role. Antibiotic use early on definitely plays a role. There have been some new studies that showed that um, giving antibiotics to mice increased, uh, I forget how they measured in mice, but in humans too, they did a study where they repopulated the gut bacteria. I know this is gross, but they did what's called a fecal transplant. No, um, to autism. Now you said autism could be caused by inflammation of inflammation the nervous in, system. In the nervous system. Okay, and this was in the news recently. Um, speaking of bioweapons, ticks used to disseminate Lyme disease. Borella bird birdifery. It sounds like a. Where are we ever going to get birdifery? Give me burger. <laughs> no, it's like it's a no. I get pie in here. It's not funny at all. But Borrelia. <laughs> But burger, you know, what do you want from McDonald? Uh, burger. No, but Borella Borg de Fury, uh was this, you said it was says here is designed for World War II, but uh, this is Plum Island, just south of Connecticut, right? Yeah, yeah. I think the woods of Pennsylvania for mm. a long time has just been common knowledge there. You call it folklore, but sure. just kind of accepted as truth that um, that's where Lyme disease in the U.S. started. Right, and. Um, I, I actually know. I actually know a couple of people that have had Lyme disease um, from you know they're they're avid hikers. It's not you know that's what happens when you go hiking in the Northeast is you run the risk of getting a tick on you, and in the Northeast you run the risk of getting a tick with Lyme disease. Um, yep. It's not yeah. And uh, now we have the this the House committee uh, is trying to force the Pentagon to to say whether or not they release these ticks purposefully. Yeah. I don't even know what Archon means, honestly, but I just thought I'd let you guys know that. <laughs> well, Archon, Archon is, is some kind of like angelic leader, especially as far as David Icke is concerned, which he calls the, uh, what, you know, we'd, we'd say uh, fallen angels, uh, Archons and Nephilim, which well, are, the, you know, they're the Archons are more offspring. The Archons are more ethereal. Uh, they're psychic vampires. They feed on emotions. Yes. Yeah. So... Well, um, stressed people are more likely to get infections. That's Absolutely. established. In fact, go. salmonella, um, salmonella turns virulent in the intestines when it def- detects ephedrine, which is a stress hormone. So, so there's a lot of pr- hormone. Is that the only reason why, or are there other uh, reasons are, why stress? Um, a lot of it's usually like so. The the bacteria will detect when the host is more vulnerable. Okay. So in the case of salmonella, it's epi- uh, epinephrine, I think, or Ep- norepinephrine. Ephedrine? No, it's epi- it's epinephrine. Ephedrine is the uh, stimulant that killed the the was it the know, weight loss Min- Minnesota right? Vikings guy Corey Stringer died from the take, fen fen. Yeah, thing, they took yeah. they took not fen fen. They took uh, ephedrine off the market. That was like your mini thins, your trucker's helper, and all that kind of shit from back in the nineties and early two thousands. Um, okay. Weight loss. Yeah. F, yeah. But no. Epinephrine. Yeah. Ad- adrenaline. Uh, adrenaline is the other name for it. Mm-hmm. You said something about a zombie apocalypse scenario. So you can use bio. You can use bio weapons to somehow 
create zombies? Yeah, so um, in that video game, Deus Ex, the, the third one, mm-hmm. at the end there was this plot line where all the people with the implants, the biomods, they all got their vagus nerve stimulated at the same time. And it basically yes. creates a zombie apocalypse. Mm. That sounds a little bit extreme, but if you look at how like Valium works, it calms down the gab uh, using GABA. It calms down the vagus nerve. So if you can imagine an anti-Valium, you know it might cause agitation and hmm. uh, zombie-like behavior. So, um, but if you but if you increase if you're able to increase that effect, you know a hundredfold, you can create something that actually mimics that zombie effect, like legitimately. Correct. Yeah, and then if you look at rabies, um, I wouldn't call rabies a total zombie virus, but it does definitely change behavior through brain inflammation. Well, and as far as uh, God, as far as we've seen, and especially, I mean, Johnny and I, you know, we watched the uh, the videos of with that uh, Australian guy. Um, What's his name? Yeah, that guy's crazy. Meow, meow, meow. meow whatever his name is, God, he made this seem like child's play. Like it, something you could do in freaking but, kindergarten. Right. But um, it, but it, well, they're trying to the design them like Legos, actually. The bacteria, really? different, yeah, the different snippets of DNA that mm-hmm. do different things. Exactly. Like plug and play, basically. It's, no, it really it's like is. It's placing it, different colored Lego blocks it, on top of each other. They call it BioBricks. It's uh, yes. out of MIT and basically DARPA. Um, the gut bacteria it ends up in the brain. This is a fairly recent study. They did electron microscope, like slides of brain tissue, and they found a very thin layer of very diverse bacteria from the gut. This is like totally turned neurolo- you know, neuroscience and neuroimmunology up on its head because the brain is supposed to be this, you know, the blood brain barrier exists. It's supposed right. to, it has a very specialized immune system pathogens and these are non-pathogenic but bacteria in general are not supposed to be in the brain it seems like it might be involved in influencing behavior so you meant in zombie apocalypse or just subtle sure. changes sure. could be related to gut bacteria now were there how it be, travels up the vagus nerve by the way were, That's were there going there. to be some sort of a zombie apocalypse created by a bioweapon um now that would uh, how would you do that? How would you would you want a bloodborne disease? Would you want a, a not disease? Would you want a bloodborne pathogen? Or would you want an airborne aerosol? aerosol well, I mean, obviously, right? this is the kind of thing that really nation states are only able to do, at least for now. I mean, in decades, um, you know, smaller groups would be able to do it, but only with a nation state's help. Honestly, this kind of stuff is uh, there's usually one or two spots of the process they're just impossible. So you're saying that, small level. So you're saying that these little tiny little cells of Al Qaeda didn't didn't make up all that anthrax and send it to people after 9/11? Well, you know, there was that South African guy for SAIC who was blamed initially and then he actually sued people who blamed him, so I'm not going to mention his name. <laughs> then there was the guy who took the fall for it who I guess was an you know, not an American, not South African, uh, not as spooky, not as spooky. Um, and he overdosed on Tylenol and they say that's how he died before confessing. But I looked up how, like how long it takes Tylenol to kill people. It's a very painful, slow death. It's not the kind of thing people can take to kill themselves. So I don't know if that's just a story or if he did it and then they caught him like on day three when he was in liver failure or what. I was going to say Tylenol causes like the hardcore cirrhosis of the liver. But it takes a long time right. to kill you. No, no, very it does. Painful. It does. Yes, yes, exactly. It's very, very, very painful. It takes days. It's not something you can just like. If you took, if you took a half a bottle of Vic, uh, not half Vicodin. If you took a half a bottle of Oxycontins, you would die. You took a half a bottle, of whatever. It, you take. It would take you bottles of Tylenol plus days to die. It was called the Amerithrax uh, investigation. You know, mm-hmm. right after nine eleven, those weird right. letters with the childlike handwriting sent to people. Wasn't um, it weird though that only like know, one or two people actually got anthrax? No, people got sick. It was a pretty serious attack. Honestly, it was a pretty pretty bad thing. Um, anthrax is nasty. Um, no, it people is. died. I can't remember how many. One of the first people who died, interestingly enough, was a photo editor for like National Enquirer or Star, one of those magazines, tabloids. And he was the guy who authorized the printing of that picture of uh, the Bush daughter. All right. Right. So if we're looking at like strictly bio warfare uh, post World War II, you know, post both world wars, whether they're nukes, you know, whatever they may be, um, you know, what are we looking at? Um, I would say you could divide it 
after 1980 when GMO started. So before okay. that, there was you know all the the typical stuff you hear about like um, anthrax and botulism and smallpox and all those things that Russia had, U.S. had. Britain has a very active program. I think France maybe. Germany, no. I think Germany is actually pretty sensitive to that stuff for some reason. And I don't think, I don't think Germany had the the opportunity. <laughs> yeah, post World War II, II, Germany would not be allowed to do that kind of stuff. You're right. No, and and it would have just been Russia anyway. It would have been the USSR. Right. right. Yeah. So yeah. Anyway. Um, so basically, all the stuff you see on Wikipedia is all the stuff from the Cold War. All the stuff that's GMO. Uh, post because GMO started in 1980, the recombinant DNA and, and PCR patents out of Stanford and UCSF. So you know, and it took a, a decade or so for that to like to figure out how to use it. And um, you know, then we started seeing the biologic medications, like from Genentech and stuff, um, <laughs> EPO, and you know, all the, the new medications that cost like a hundred thousand dollars for chemo. Yeah. Those are so, called biologics. That's funny. So it seems my- like this just opened. I mean. I know you've said this before. You you've called it this to us, but a Pandora's box. Oh, it's absolutely. Like once it's open, it's it's all just getting out there. Yeah, and now with the whole uh, biohacker DIY bio, and then also synthetic biology, which is that concept of or systems biology as well. The idea of mm-hmm. bacteria being programmable life. So let's say you take E. coli or yeast, and you want to make insulin or medications. Well, you could also make something bad. Theoretically, and um, <clears throat> that's definitely a Pandora's box, and it creates a situation where, you know, in a few decades, people in their home could have like a rice cooker-sized bioreactor, and they mail order plasmids or a strain of E. coli, and they put it in there, and then instead of getting insulin from Walmart, they can make it at home. God, so I have two separate memes in my head. I have like sci-fi sicky boy in my head. <laughs> going back to an earlier episode Sorry, we talked about Davey the a word yeah. part three um Davey boy. you know it's just what's that davy boy is is we see the cyberpunk dream coming for and for a lot of people it is a dream um mm-hmm. for people i know personally that is like something they want to see um and personally, yeah, I, I don't know why. I don't know why anyone would want to see that. Those kind of people are just embracing the uh, Kali Yuga, I guess. Uh, yeah. I guess they're, they're embracing the dystopian and Kapistan that they think that we're heading towards. They, and so I have to ask for maybe normie listeners um, or people me. just coming in. Or no, just just you know new new people coming in. You know that are fans of like pop culture and all that. Okay. Uh, have you seen anything of like Stranger Things? No, I did. I hate Netflix, man. I I I agree. I agree completely. But MK I Ultra. Agree. Is I agree. A but big I watch Netflix. It's a <laughs> big. Okay. What'd you say, John? I heard that. You're all. I agree. I agree. But I watch Netflix. I agree. I watch Netflix, but I've seen every all three seasons of Stranger Things because of the MK Ultra storyline that goes on with that. Yeah, I heard about and just that. How I it's kind of being of it. fed in it's being fed into the public in like their own light, yes. you know? Yes. Yeah. Uh, They're priming the expectations. Exactly. Um so it's kind of a pop culture MK Ultra like it it shows that it's horrific. It shows that it's borderline demonic. They show that it's it's pretty much demonic, but well, maybe I'll watch it now that you're telling me that. Um, maybe I'll try. You really, especially the first two seasons, like what's it, the, it is very explicitly demonic. What is up with everybody getting nosebleeds? That. What's that? What's up with everybody getting nosebleeds? It's only, it's only eleven. It's only the girl oh. that was stolen, stolen from her mother, and forced into the MK Ultra program. Her mother okay. was then electrocuted into retardation to the point that she's like freaking saying all these different phrases that mean nothing until you're, you know, in the CIA, whatever. But she was stolen from her mother and put into this program with like a little Indian chick that also was tortured and everything. Um, but again, it's borderline demonic. Um, MK Ultra testing. And they 
all they do is condition you to believe that it's not demonic. No, no, no. It's totally just weird scientific. We don't understand it. That's fine. Or you can call it demonic if you like, but, you know, whatever. You'll leave that up in, into it, you know, interpretation. Mm-hmm. It's about how the private industry, the pharma, you know, the food yes. companies, they, they love this stuff. Well, they let's love talk people about, being yeah. sick. Well, and I th- and I will. I, the last thing I'll say is just I think Stranger Things is probably the apex of that. Okay, I think it okay. is. So I'll give it a try, maybe. Yeah, I a- I have Netflix from somebody else that I can check if I need to. I'll I'll think about it. So I try not to watch Netflix. Netflix is usually like the worst of the worst of like. Okay, so. Do you guys now, want to talk about the anime studio that burned down, or no? That's like, is that? I don't think FTN would cover that. Uh, we can talk about that for a second. Yeah, I think that was actually. Uh, what, what do you oh, think God. happened? Somebody was trying to do some degenerate, degeneracy. Well, was, <sighs> people were saying it was like an incel thing, but it turns out the guy was obsessed with trains. He was like a train photographer who invented. Yes. This. <gasps> was it, hold on a day. second. Where's Dark Enlightenment? Oh, oh shit. No, he was Japanese. So oh, okay, he, okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. For years he tried Woo. to popularize this word he invented, and then I guess the anime studio coincidentally, or they saw it on the image boards, they took his word and they meant it to mean something else about like girls playing saxophone. Oh, and they have this like cutesy anime with musicians or something. And this was like a feminist anime company. It was like seven to one female to male ratio. All the oh, animators so, like, were female. Almost men. nothing of value was lost. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, it's still sad. No, it's Which, still I sad. Mean, my, it, it's it, sad. It, it is. Go ahead, Johnny. I said it's sad, but it's anime. What is a Japanese feminist anyway? Come on, they can't be that. Yeah, bad. right. Yeah. Okay. So, million people going to storm Area 51, right? You guys know what this is. I've said this before. This whole thing is a fucking discra- d- distraction. It's a distraction from the Epstein bullshit. It is one hundred percent. Absolutely. Because you, want guess- to know how, you want to know how I know? There's a Kool Aid. Oh. There's a Kool Aid ad. Oh yeah. Hashtag see them aliens. Hashtag Area Fifty One raid. Hashtag it's official. Budweiser, Bud Light Area Fifty One Special Edition. Hundreds of people uh, that you know every single day in your home, every single day, have been on this guy's list, whether they were blackmailed against their will or they have been to the island of their own free will and did what Epstein, you know, offers. Um, These people have been there. And guess what? All you can think about is raiding Area 51 for aliens. You don't care about... The owl is identical to the Bohemian Grove, and the owl is, of course, the symbol of Athena in Greek mythology, but guess what? The owl is actually the symbol of Molech, and then the sword. Uh, Minerva. Like the owl's Minerva, Moloch's the bull, right? Yeah. Well, well depends. The, it depends, the owl though. and the bull are symbols of Molech. Right. The bull is the ultimate symbol of uh, – and, and these ancient cultures have mimicked and mixed – you know, gods and goddesses throughout history. The bull is Saturn, Kronos, um, uh, Satan. Um, all these, you know, it, it all comes back to Satan. Um, oh my God, the bull go. is the ultimate bull do you, cult. Do you want a quick astrology tie-in? Uh, Taurus, so, the bull, uh, you know, the whole um, Noan Minotaur religion happened yes. like during that age of, age of yes. Taurus. And on the opposite side of the zodiac uh, is Libra. Libra and Taurus are the two that rule Venus, and that's like where um, well, Moloch Minerva comes from. So even though exactly. Libra is like the the scales, I think the owl might have something to do with uh, Venus as well as Moloch. Exactly, which is Venus, Minerva, that, like the giant owl at Bohemian Grove. That's uh, there, Minerva. There are, th- there are theories that actually Venus is the the ultimate home of Satan and his armies. If they were banished there, that is a very, very, very th- uh, fringe theory. Huh. Uh, so Epstein is involved with this. He's involved with AI. He's involved with, with um, the Singularity University. He's involved with life extension stuff. He's involved with the CRISPR stuff. He's involved with gene drives. Um, speaking of the gene He's thing, one of the biggest donors to like all of these. That's what I'm saying. He is the single, <laughs> non-corporation like investor, single-person investor into artificial intelligence. Uh, 
Yeah. Most most medications, you know, they wear off. They have a half life. They bind to the receptor and then they they detach. Sure. Well, there's certain things called irreversible agonists where they bind to the receptor and they never stop. Mm -hmm. Like botulism toxin is one, and there's certain birth controls like the kind where they, like in the Ethiopians, you know, where it's basically an irreversible chemical uh, agent. And um, yeah, that stuff's bad. Like hopefully that's never in mm -hmm. consumer products, um, you know, that we just don't know about. And yeah, that could cause sterility right there. Yeah. Because normally the body heals, you know, like you're exposed to the xenoestrogen or whatever, mm -hmm. and eventually the body recovers. But for these irreversible agonists, the only way to recover is the cell has to recycle the receptor site, which usually happens, like with botulism it happens too, but in theory, like with, um, yeah, basically that's um, definitely bad stuff. So we're getting into like Singularity University and life extension movement, everything. I mean, what do we think about the movie Gattaca? That was, and, and Johnny, you mentioned that earlier too. Um, yeah, it's I mean, prophetic, that, you know, it describes <laughs> that how, was, uh, it definitely was. Corporate America and universities will decide whether or not to invest in you, invest, spend their time on you, allow you to spend money with them, you know, <laughs> the case of university. Um, well, that's, yeah, that's, genetic that's profile. kind of like the Chinese social credit too, right? Yes. That's yes. pretty much where they're at. Yeah, yeah. Um, the they've of, admitted it. Their, their government has admitted it publicly. That's what they're doing. The loss of anonymity is another theme in Gattaca and how everyone's, um, you know, expelling DNA through their skin cells and such. Mm -hmm. And we are approaching that world. Well, like you were saying earlier, you leave DNA everywhere you are from, you know, what, whatever you touch, you're leaving skin cells. You're sitting down, you're leaving skin cells. That's your DNA. Your DNA is everywhere. And these people yeah, and, and, are getting uh, a hold so, of it, and they can manipulate it. And well, not only they don't, no, it's not for the manipulation they part, they can target it. They too. target it. Yes, they can target your DNA. Yeah. you can become a targeted individual. You too can be in a weird Facebook group. Absolutely, um, and that's where nanotech comes in because yes. um, <clears throat> nanotech op, you know, will operate. It operates at the nanoscale, and it's a very effective biological modifier that's non-organic. Mm -hmm. um, so it can do things that viruses and bacteria just can't do. It can edit DNA. It can tar It can be used for health. It can be used for good. It can be used for evil. And that's a that's a theme here. Is that all of this technology? It's not inherently bad. Yes, right. You know, it's a bit scary. Yes, singularity. I don't believe it's a good thing. But um, you know, when it comes down to it, every individual case has different uses, and it's not all. You know, sure. It just depends on who's. It just depends on who's using it and what they're using it for. Um, there's no way to control you know now that technology's out of the bag you know it's it's out there people are using it you know you've got these chinese companies doing stuff with it you got all these american companies in different countries doing stuff with it so we'll see we'll see what's going on yeah so that leads us to the, the third and final uh, section yes. like the future tech um Google has spent a lot in this field. You know, now they're Alphabet, but back when they were Google, they started something called Calico, like mm -hmm. uh, the type of cat, and mm -hmm. basically it's life extension. Yes. Um, very secretive group. They didn't really s explain much about what they do, if they have any products. The thing you have to know about Google and Singularity University is they're very tight with DARPA. They've kind of replaced DARPA to some extent. I mean, DARPA has been replaced by themselves. I mean, by the government itself. They started IARPA for the internet stuff. DARPA does biological technologies division like their third division they originally only had two i think it and physical weapons um which you know <clears throat> the internet came out of darpa um think uh tech things to do with nukes came out of darpa mm -hmm. and um <clears throat> now you know they still do a lot of stuff but there's private sector versions of darpa which is what alphabet essentially is and um I mentioned DNA printing, how it's outpaced Moore's law by multitudes, by you know multiple orders of magnitude, actually. And um, <clears throat> talked about the Gattaca stuff, how you know people leave DNA everywhere, and that's a privacy risk as well as eventually a security risk. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about how it's like the new Manhattan Project or the new space race, biotech as well as infotech. Oh, I mean, biotech is most definitely a race right now. It's 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 even more heated than the space race, I think, because at least this is real. Well, yeah, even more than that, it's a currency. Mm -hmm. 
it seems what? to be a currency, not just information, but DNA uh, genomes. It, oh, it yeah. really is a currency. There's something called bioprospecting, like where pharmaceutical companies and chemical companies, they go to like Brazil, rainforest, that kind of stuff, and they look for exotic plants for new medications. That's a real thing. Um, and it's possible within the human you know, populations that, yeah, there are certain traits. I mean, I don't like X-Men and all that shit, but the concept of mutations being of value, that's real. I don't think they've done it on a mass scale, but companies like 23andMe or pharma industry is probably already doing that. Uh, with regards to the Manhattan Project tie-in, um, Department of Energy was actually the one that did the Human Genome Project. And, you know, that's not just a coincidence. These are WMD technologies. Um, and nanotech is also Department of Energy. And then there's MEMS too, which is micro machines. Not sure if you guys have ever seen Ghost in the Shell or those kind. Of, have you seen that that anime? Yes. It's okay. Like a, well, basically, yes, the original. You know, you, yeah. I can't remember if nanotech is part of Ghost in the Shell. I think it is, but micro machines are a bigger part because it's like the bridge between um, augmentations that are visible mm -hmm. and um, nanotech. But it's so it's invisible, but it's bigger. Like little robots in the bloodstream fixing things kind of like that um what was that amazing voyage or something that old sci-fi story about the submarine in the bloodstream or something kind of like that like a little little robot that can fit within your blood vessels right. that that's mems and uh the last topic was a uh, neural link elon Musk did a press conference this uh week where he debuted some of the uh, technical specs of Neuralink, his startup that is taking a lot of DARPA research and trying to bring it to market. And it's kind basically going to be these... What? Sorry, what? Like wetware? Uh, yeah, it's like brain-computer interface. It's going to be right. Bluetooth-enabled. Jesus <laughs> I don't know if that's Christ. a good thing or not, because Bluetooth... Hold on a second. Isn't those... Bluetooth bad for your brain? Like... Oh, I, I was thinking about the security implications. I was thinking about well, getting that hacked. Too. Yeah. yeah, radiation but, I mean, itself. That too, too, but like the Bluetooth of itself is bad. You know, like the waves are like bad for your brain, which is really funny that you put it up yeah, here. Yeah, it, it's 2.4 gigahertz just like Wi-Fi. Right. It's the one that boils water. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you're going to – and it's this is Neuralink. Okay, so I'm sorry to interrupt, but yeah, it was just – No, it's okay. Thank anyway. you for bringing that up. Um, Bluetooth, the, the newer version, are lower power. So in theory, it's not that bad, sure. I guess. But it's in the – it's actually going to be an implant – under the skull or something. Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, and they use, so part of the DARPA grant, which is funny because Elon like took credit for the stuff and then DARPA called him out on Twitter saying, hey, Elon, I'm glad you debuted our technology that we <laughs> that we invested with UCSF and they developed it for you. <laughs> you know, um, Typical Elon. You know, I've heard stories of, about Elon up in, in uh, the Bay Area and, you know, he's a weird guy. I know he's, he's likable, but... I wouldn't trust that guy further than I could throw him. Let me red pill yeah. you on PayPal. Elon Musk didn't make PayPal. Peter Thiel was forced to bring him in because they there didn't make with X.com. So yes. Elon Musk was a, a weirdo South, South African who, um, you know, he, he was into crypto, not cryptocurrency, but internet money. Is it uh, crypto boa? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I don't know what he is, honestly. Yeah. You know, his, no, he's, could yeah, be uh, Musk he's Dutch. Yeah, he is. No, he's Dutch. Yeah, no, Elon Musk, Elon Musk is Dutch. Yeah, he's a Boer. Okay, all right. Sorry, I keep on. I keep going with the Boer accent. <laughs> well, Elon. Okay, but he so was forced wanna, to be brought in. I don't want to dox myself, but the PayPal mafia hates Elon Musk. The PayPal mafia is like Peter Thiel and all the people who started PayPal with him. They hate him. Because they, he was, they brought him in. He got as much equity as they did, or something. He really scammed someone. And I don't want to like give away specific information, but the people he associated with in San Francisco before he became this famous, like you know, 10, 15 years ago, very weird people. Like, um, uh, what's that? Roger, uh, not Roger Waters. That that creepy Waters guy who does those movies. You know what I'm talking about? Um, ultimately, as well, you know, a perfect world is a meritocracy, right? Right. But the real world, our world currently, is not a meritocracy. No, it's who you uh, know, how much you got. And actually, what it is is how many pictures do they have of you? It is. Is it everything inverted, though. you know? Things yeah, are it is. The way um, everything's but normally inverted. You would have a meritocracy. If the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he wasn't real? Hmm. What if the greatest trick the devil pulled was convincing the world that he was God in everything he said? 
and, it's, it's and fallen look, world. Everything's I, backwards. To prove we right. live in a fallen world, the trailer to Cats came out today. Do you guys hear oh about this? God. I did oh not. My God. I watched it. Cats my musical. Wife, my wife made me watch it. Hold on. Oh, my don't, God. Don't, no, I haven't heard. Hold on. Tell me. We're well over two hours with this one. This is the past couple episodes have been really good with uh, going over, giving people a lot of good content. Uh, we're, we're into about two hours and 20-ish minutes. Not bad. Uh, Astro uh do you have anything you'd like to shill at uh, Twitter or blog or anything? We will have you on again. We'll do the um, Im- uh, autoimmune thing. I think that's a, another good topic. We can we can get deep into that. Do it in deep and dive on that. Uh, we're gonna hopefully Brad has a creepy pasta for me to download real quick, and uh, we're gonna play that for you. And we'll see y'all later. Bye, guys. Have a good night. Where to begin? Yes, I really am writing this in the year 2078. While time travel is a reality here, it's not in the form that your early 21st century science fiction movies would have you believe. There are no humans getting into machines and traveling back in time. No, it's only information that we can send back. This isn't too outlandish even for all of you out there in 2019. If you look up the information on the internet, you'll see that the scientists are already working on sending basic binary information through time. By 2078, this technology had already existed for almost 10 years, but is only known by a few and is heavily controlled. It was in the initial experimental stages when everything went to hell, and I am one of the few who could access it. How does it work? Well, there's no point even trying to get into all that. Explaining it here would be like one of you trying to type out how a smartphone worked to someone living in the year 1800. 